Hey folks, Dr. Mike Hotel, Renaissance Periodization, covering all of the chapters in basic terms, big overview for the Renaissance Diet 2.0 book, available right in the link in the description if you're ever curious about way more detail, and we have it on all of these subjects. Ever want scientific references? Every single chapter, every single point is referenced excessively in the description in the link. So, Part two of chapter six, which part one was supplements, and you can see that video if you like, is hydration. We ranked hydration within the 5% of supplements and hydration. So we're saying that the effect of all supplements and all hydration is a total of 5%. That's super, super low, but water is essential to life. And hydration is important for optimizing, especially performance, but also keeping you upright, which is, you know, sort of important for your body composition. If you're dead, it's not really good for body composition. Although it does burn a lot of fat, if you think about it. So, here's the deal. Why are we not prioritizing hydration more highly? The number one fundamental factor is the power of human thirst. If you only drink to thirst, you'll be ensuring the vast majority of your health, okay? if you never drink ever unless you're thirsty, you almost certainly not affect your health hardly at all with poor hydration. It's very rare that hydration is seriously messed up enough to cause you health decrements if you're just drinking a thirst. Now, if you ignore your thirst, yeah, you can get into some trouble. But if you drink to thirst, you're probably very healthy, which means your body composition is probably unencumbered. Can you benefit from a little bit of alteration for performance? Yes, and we'll cover those details, but it's just very small. Even if you just drink to thirst, your performance will still be good. It just won't be amazing. We'll get to what amazing is. But that's really why the effect of hydration is ranked so low by us. You can't mess it up that much unless you're just crazy and ignoring stuff that are fundamental human drives like thirst. Let me put that into perspective. Well, why didn't we rank calories like that? Well, if you follow your hunger, you'll still be alive. Yeah, but if you follow your hunger, there is no real guarantee you're not going to be either super overweight or super underweight. So if you're trying to get muscular and gain weight on purpose, you can't follow your hunger because it's probably telling you some wrong stuff. It's never telling you to eat enough. If you're trying to lose fat, lose weight, get healthier and get more performance, you probably have to go completely against your hunger. You almost never go completely against your thirst for optimization of performance. It's basically just automatic. So yes, it is important, but remember we talk about diet priority principles. We're talking about the ones you actually have to think about. If you hardly ever have to think about something and it happens automatically, we're not going to pay a lot of attention to it, which will be a point we'll come back to in just a bit. So, thirst will almost always keep you safe and healthy, but there could be some benefits to going above and beyond thirst for performance. Here's the deal. Basic guidelines, just regularly drink plenty of fluids with meals and between meals. How do you know you're well hydrated? If you're regularly peeing off yellow or clear, you're probably really good, right? If you're peeing sort of like dark tea color all the time, that's not really great. Possibly see your doctor, right? You're definitely, if it's super dark yellow all the time, you're chronically dehydrated, not a very good thing. Very unlikely, but if you're, if you're really worried about your hydration, peeing clear and off yellow most of the time is a really good idea. Before, during, and after training, what you want to do, if you want to optimize, is drink electrolyte-enhanced beverages right? Like um, a calorie-free Powerade, for example, um, on purpose, not just by thirst. Why? There is a thirst delay with performance. What does that mean? That means if you are mid-session, mid-training, mid-competing, by the time you become thirsty, your performance has already fallen. So if you seek to redress your performance, when you start drinking again, it takes a long time for your body's systems to get internally hydrated. Getting hydrated is not a matter of putting fluids down your throat because they have to get through your throat, into your stomach, so on and so forth, leach out through the blood, get into the intracellular space, get into the actual space between the cells, within the cells, hydrate all the muscles. That takes some time. If you're training during that time, it happens very slowly. And you could actually be losing so much sweat per minute or per hour that no amount of water you can realistically drink is going to keep you actually rehydrating during that time. 
So if you train for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and you're training in an air-conditioned gym, don't you worry about any of this stuff. If you've got Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu wrestling practice, if you're out on a soccer field for a long time, if you're an outdoor endurance athlete, if you're doing CrossFit at a gym which doesn't have air conditioning, and most of them don't, which makes CrossFit some real tough people, it's certainly tougher than me, um, if you're doing in, uh, you know, workouts of the day there and stuff like that for hours on end, you're sweating a ton, Make sure before you head to the gym, you drink water on purpose with some electrolytes in it. During, drink even when you're not thirsty, keep sipping on it. And after, start the replenishing, especially if, if you have another performance session later, because by the time you get thirsty, it's already too late. Your performance has already suffered. Right? That's a really, really big deal. Small explanatory variable, doesn't account for a ton of performance, but if you want your best, you definitely have to do it. Now let's put it this way. If you have a bad training session or two, fine, you learn your lesson, you start drinking water. You don't want to mess like uh, up like this at a competition. Right? If you go to an endurance race and you start getting thirsty during the race, not good. You already suffered in performance. Now, here's a real big fallacy. So earlier we said that you know it's a fallacy in some extent to think that per hydration is super important, has a priority in dieting. And there's kind of a mystery as to why. Well, number one, it's automatic. But here's the real big problem with thinking that, no, hold on, hydration is super important. It's even more important than calories. Folks only, remember, have a certain amount of bandwidth, whether it be mental or financial or physical or emotional, to dedicate to dieting. All of us do. Some of us have a lot. Some of us have a little, given our circumstances, so on and so forth. You can fill up that bandwidth with things that make a big difference. Calories, macros, timing, etc., but if you fill up a lot of that bandwidth with things that don't make a huge difference, like minute differences in hydration, you're going to be taking away resources, mental, emotional, financial, so on, from the other important stuff, and the net effect won't be as great. Case in point, I'm sure you've seen this a lot. Folks will start eating healthy, and they'll start eating for performance, and they'll say, man, you know, I started a diet, so i got to stay real hydrated, so I'm drinking water, you know, every, every hour I've got my bottle with me all the time. What does that do? It makes them pay attention to something that makes almost no difference whatsoever. You'll be fine just drinking water normally. And it drains their willpower. And it drains their patience. Right? If you if eating healthy means not just eating four good meals a day and calling it even, if eating healthy and eating for performance means you gotta have a friggin' water bottle with you everywhere you go, and you gotta be oh, oh hold on, I'm in the middle, middle of a meeting, but it's time for water, because my you know, I have to say like I'm a machine now. It's just gonna drain you and give you almost nothing in return. And we don't want folks spending a lot of time doing stuff that doesn't really have that huge an influence. Right? And that's why we have to rank hydration so low because it's not worth this huge investment. It's worth a small one for the performance oriented doing super hard workouts. For everyone else, just relax, drink fluids normally, make it a habit to drink with meals, and you're good to go. Thanks for tuning in.